What's up you guys? I got another video for you guys on my YouTube channel and in this video we talk a lot about uh, qualifying the lead to see if um, it's good for an acquisition or not, okay? We, we go over my call flow and we go over my script, okay you guys? Um, I drop a ton of knowledge and exactly what I do in my business, okay you guys? I documented the process a few videos with my employee and also uh, in that in the video we talk about one question that I always ask the sellers and it always gets a price reduction if the seller is motivated so on that one phone call where we got the twenty thousand dollar price reduction is going to be in this YouTube video guys so please watch it all the way like comment share and subscribe and let me know your, your guys's thoughts if you don't have access to my YouTube channel uh, send me a DM and I would love to give you guys access to that. Okay, you guys? So I uh, hope you guys enjoy. And let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. Thanks, you guys. So got me ready. All right, so get the, the, the flow out, the lead flow. What's up, you guys? All right, so um, I'm here to do a training for my lead manager who is starting Monday. Um, so here you guys see this is my call flow right here. Um, this is pretty much how the lead is going to come in and where it's going to go and how everything's going to work. So. Um, right here you guys see the new lead so the orange right here that is a decision all right and the blue what that means is it's an action so if it's orange you, you see it's a yes or no decision blue that means it's action so if you look at the top uh, the new lead comes in all right and the first thing we want to find out when a new lead comes in is are they interested in selling okay if they're not interested in selling, we put them in an auto follow-up campaign, uh, which won't be touched for three to four months, and then you know there will be an automatic text sent to them about three and a half months later. Uh, so if it, if they are interested in selling, selling, uh, so what's that? Um, I got my lead manager here, you guys, just so you know. If they're if they ask me any questions, you know. Uh, I'm going to be answering them. So, um, so after you find out they're interested, then it gets pushed to build report and gather all information. So when you build report, you know that if, if you don't know what report is, what report is is you're building trust with the seller. Okay, so when you're building report, you know you're trying to build a relationship with them, build that trust with them. Um, become their friend pretty much so they're, they're willing to sell the property to you all right so you always want to make sure you're building rapport with the seller and uh, you know building that trust with them if they don't trust you they don't like you they're not gonna do business with you so you guys got to learn how to build rapport all right um, sorry we got kids in the background here uh, we're not in the office right now it's late over here so um, so after you build rapport and you gather all the information uh, throughout the throughout the conversation. You're going to be building rapport, and throughout the conversation, you're going to get you know uh, information that you're going to be adding. And then once once you are doing that, then there's going to be another decision, a yes or no decision, which is was you able to determine their motivation? Okay, if you was able to determine their motivation, then that you know it's if they're hot, warm, or cold, then it gets pushed to acquisitions. Okay. This is for the the qualifying leads. This is a lead manager and qualifying leads. Okay, this is not an acquisitions process, and uh, you know this is just for the incoming phone calls and to qualify the lead or disqualify the lead. So, can you save this live or put this on your YouTube, please? Yes, I will. Um, so, if you're able to determine the motivation and you find out it's hot or warm. 
then it gets pushed to acquisitions, okay? And the reason why we always push it to acquisitions if it's hot or warm is because that means it is potential to be a good deal because their motivation is high, they need to sell, they want to sell as soon as possible, okay? If it's cold or you didn't determine the motivation, okay? Then at that point, uh, you, you, you need to know if you got a asking price, okay? Try to get the asking price. If, if you don't have the asking price, then you automatically analyze the property and give a low ball offer, okay? If you got an asking price, you're still going to analyze the, the, the property. And uh, if it's a deal or maybe a deal, then you're going to push it to acquisitions, okay? If it's no deal... Uh, then you're going to analyze the property and you're going to give a low ball offer. Uh, then based on their reaction, this is the decision. If they have a bad or good decision is, uh, is good or bad or good reaction, that's what the decision is going to come to. So if they have a good uh, reaction to that low ball offer, you're going to push them to acquisitions. Um, if they have a bad if they have a bad reaction, then you're going to try to push it to a realtor, see if they want to work with a realtor. Um, if they don't want to work with the realtor, that's fine. No problem. Uh, we put them in an auto follow-up campaign and uh, we, we send them an automatic text three to four months later, okay, to see if um, their motivation has changed any. So um, our goal is to capitalize on every lead so if, it, if it's not if it's a retail lead we're not going to debt it we're actually going to try to capitalize on that deal by pushing it to a realtor and splitting profits with them um if it's if it's uh they, they don't want to work with the realtor um and it's not a good deal um then we'll or they don't want to sell then we'll follow up with them you know three and a half months four months um from the date they called because their motivation can change so if their motivation changes, you know, um, then obviously you can potentially have a, a deal on your hands. Um, so you guys understand that? You guys have any questions about that? How can I acquire that chart? Um, honestly, it's something I made, but if you send me a DM, I can send it over to you. Um, so did you understand that process or did you not hear all of it? No, you told me it before. Okay. All right. So. Now that we're going to get into the script, you guys, and remember, this is uh, a lead manager slash qualifier script. OK, this is not an acquisition script. OK, this is just to qualify the lead to see if the lead should be pushed to acquisitions or pushed to a realtor, realtor or pushed to a follow up campaign. OK, so it's a standard script. Um, I came up with this as well. Um, so you're just going to say, hi, this is your name with your company. Um, so this is the return call, okay? This is if you missed a call, you're returning it. This is what you're going to say um, as an opening live answer. You're going to answer the phone promptly and as, as quickly as possible and smile when you answer the phone. The reason why you want to smile when you answer the phone is because your whole tone of voice is going to change when you smile. You can't be a Debbie Downer. Uh, all depressed and stuff if you're smiling and excuse the noise in the background you guys we got kids in the background um, so always smile when you're on the phone talking to sellers or buyers or whatever because when you do that your tone of voice is going to change your attitude is going to change which in return will change the the client's tone of voice and their reaction to you so it's always good to do that um, you know, answering the phone nicely, saying thank you for calling. We appreciate it. How can we help you? Um, and then, obviously, finding out if they're genuinely interested in the property. So, like I said, going back to the call flow, the first thing we want to do is one of the first things we want to do is find out if they're interested in selling. Okay, if they're not interested in selling, we don't do not want to waste too much time on that phone. Okay, so then that's when we push them to the auto drip campaign. All right. If they're interested in selling, then at that point, we're going to set the stage, uh, build rapport throughout the conversation, listen to the conversation, and add value throughout the combo. Okay? Um, so you, you'll set the stage, meaning this is what we're, we're, we're telling them what to expect up front. Okay? So um, 
you're saying great typically people who call us uh, want to know how much we can offer for the property how this all works do you have those same type of questions they'll reply sounds good you have about five minutes so you so we can ask you some questions about the property so they you know they don't get upset when you're asking them question after question uh, about the condition of the property and stuff like that so after that you're going to uh, give them their op you're going to tell them after that I'll let you know what your options are and you can just let me know what you'd like to do um, so like I said you want to set the expectations early so if you have to push it to a realtor they understand all of that okay um, and then also being upfront, honest with them, tell them, telling them that you're a real estate investment company, so you don't buy every property that you come across, but for those properties that don't work for us, we have an amazing team of realtors that can help you uh, list it on the open market. So when you say that, um, you're actually going to capitalize on the retail lead. So a lot of wholesalers, they don't capitalize on the retail leads. They'll just you know dead the lead because it's not a wholesale deal. But you can actually push those to realtors and um, capitalize on that and get a percentage. So it's always good to utilize that. And in return, you can get MLS access from the realtor uh, because you're giving them these leads. Okay, And then on top of it, you get a percentage of the deal. So it's a win-win all around. Um, so then you're just going to obviously ask for their... Um, contact information make sure you get their phone email full name um, then you're going to ask them all the questions about the property you're going to find out their motivation why they're thinking about selling it um, and I like to ask them how do you know if you're working with the right person uh, when you ask them this uh, what's up you guys when you ask them this you know how do you know you're working with the right person when when you're selling your house that's going to give you uh, everything you need to know on who you need to become to work with them, right? So when that when you ask them this, they're going to tell you everything that they that you need to know to become the right person to to buy their property, okay? So, and the motivation, diving deeper. Um, I'm still working on this, you guys, so uh, bear with me here, but diving deeper into motivation that's pretty much saying you know if whatever reason they give you say they're behind on their for uh their mortgage payments or whatever you're going to dive deeper into that ask them really why how long have they been dealing with that or um you know how they plan on solving it or whatever that way you're actually diving deep into the problems and trying to solve those issues okay you guys um, finding out how long they think about they're thinking about selling and stuff like that um, then also the timeline um, if you do decide to sell to to us or anyone else would you like to do so in 30 90 or sometime further out that's also going to give you some kind of motivation um, if somebody's selling they need to tell if somebody's telling you they need to sell today they're going to be a lot motivated than somebody else who's saying you know they they can sit on it for 90 days or whatever um, but then you're finding out how much they owe on the property, mortgages, taxes, liens, stuff like that. So you can get a rough idea if it's a wholesale deal or not. Um, and then you're going to uh, ask them the home value, prices of the home value. Um, make sure you tell them that you haven't done your research yet. Um, but do you know? Do you know what happen, What do you know? Uh, what houses are worth in the area? All right. So when you ask them what houses are worth in the area, you get a kind of, kind of good idea of where they're at and how knowledgeable they are in their neighborhood. And obviously asking them what's the lowest offer they might consider. OK, you want to obviously get the lowest price you can on a property. So and then you're going to come back, say, is that all negotiable? And you don't have to word everything just like this. You want to word it in a way that it works best for you guys and how it comes off of your tongue or those off of your tongue uh you know you want to make sure it, it's a smooth conversation so you don't have to word it exactly like this um but the whole point is to get the goal across and get this the, the point across okay um and then you come in if their price is under the retail value of the property or if they have hot or warm motivation then follow the setting next steps qualified section okay so that's this what you're going to do if they are qualified okay if they are not 
then give if they will not give us an asking price and their motivation is cold or unknown to analyze the property and give a low ball offer okay remember you guys this is a qualifier script a lead manager script not an acquisitions manager okay that's two different scripts in two different positions okay so this is if it's a cold lead or um, their motivation is low the qualifier is actually going to offer all of this on the phone okay they're going to offer it on the phone because we don't want the acquisitions managers to waste time working on unqualified leads all right so um if it if it's a qualified lead i mean it's under retail price they're motivated you know it's around the the price we need to be at that we need to be at um then you tell them you know this sounds like a property we'd like to make an offer on um, our home buying specialist, which is the acquisitions manager, but we just call it home buying sell specialist when we talk to sellers because um, that's what they'll they'll understand that more than if you were to say acquisitions manager. So, well, our home buying specialist will put your options and your cash offer together. When you two talk, I'm going to transfer you to our specialist. They'll be able to make you an offer, and only it takes a few minutes. Sound good? And all this is happening over the phone, guys. We don't go out to the property appointments. Um, we don't look at the property. We don't view the property. All this is done virtually, okay, you guys? Um, if the seller, seller says yes, great. Uh, you tell them they're, they're in good hands and just give a moment while they transfer them over to the acquisitions manager. If the seller says no, then ask them when the best time would be for the home buying specialist to call them. Uh, regardless, you're telling them they're in good hands and a home buying specialist will call them as soon as possible. All right. Setting the next steps if they're unqualified or at retail price. You know, you'll say something along the lines of this. That sounds great. Uh, that sounds like a great price on the open market is listing the property an option for you uh, for, for option for your open to order to get that price. Range. So that goes back to when we were setting the stage earlier. Uh, when we let them know in the beginning that if it doesn't make sense for us, we'll push them to a realtor, okay? So they're not at all surprised when we do that, okay? It's very important to set that stage in the in the beginning. All right, you guys. So um, if their answer is yes, then you let them let your agent know to reach out to, to them through phone and then have the sellers to expect a phone call from them within the next 24 hours. Um, and then we come into dealing with objections and concerns. So when you guys are dealing with these um, sellers, you're going to come into a lot of issues. What's up, you guys? What's up, Jake? You always come through with the fire. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Lulu. All right. So when you're dealing with these sellers' phone calls, you're always going to come up with and objections. These sellers are always going to give you some kind of reason or some kind of attitude or whatever. All right. I know you. If you guys have taken phone calls, you know what I'm talking about. So, here are some of the common objections right here, you guys. Um, you know, why did you send me a postcard or a letter? Why did you contact me? So you just tell them uh, we didn't target you specifically. You know, we're just looking to buy a house in that area. And uh, we've mailed out, mailed to several people in that area, and that's it. You just happen to be one of the people. We haven't seen your house or anything like that. Um, and then somebody says, um, somebody just said, somebody just said I'm scared to call because of rejection. So um, that is something that everybody deals with in, in the beginning. Um, the thing is, is you, you can't be scared of rejection. You're always going to be rejected in this business, okay? I don't care how, how long, much I still get rejected. I was getting re rejected today. So you're always going to be rejected no matter what. You have to get over that hump and, you know, build confidence through taking action um, and just learning from your failures. Um, being on the phone consistently will... will help with that okay so i just recommend continuously getting on the phone continuously learning from your failures and uh continuously growing all right you guys um so another objection is why do you think i'm selling my house you just say something along the lines of we really don't uh know if you're interested in selling or not but we are looking for homes in your area so we contacted you 
We didn't target you specifically. We're just looking to buy a house in your area. And then another objection is, have you seen my house? Um, sorry about that, guys. Uh, pause there because I only got 20% left. Um, have you seen my house? You tell them, no, I haven't seen, you, seen your home personally, um, but we are looking to buy a house in that area. That's why we contacted you. Uh, I'm not sure I'll sell. I completely understand by receiving an offer, you are under no obligation to do anything. Um, you can't have my email address. You tell them, okay, no problem. Um, technical or unique questions. Um, so uh, this this wouldn't apply to you guys if you're a one-man team, okay? Um, this is something for my lead manager specifically. But if, it, if it's something that you guys don't know, um, it's okay to tell them, you know, you're not sure. You'll talk to your partner. Even if you don't have a partner, just say, you know, you got to talk to your partner just to buy you some time. And when you buy that time with the seller, that's going to yeah. allow you to search for the answer, you know. So if they ask you something and you're not sure what the answer is, just say, hey, that's a great question. I actually don't know the answer to it, um, but I'd love to find that answer for you. Uh, as soon as I talk to my partner, even if you don't have one, that's okay. Uh, then search on the internet, look up on YouTube, podcasts, or whatever to search for that answer. Right, guys? Yes. Um, uh, they typically ask, how do you get their information? You just say, good question. Our marketing department gets the information through public records. Um, I just want an offer, no problem. I just need to ask some questions about the condition of the property so we can get you one. Um, you should be able to look everything you don't uh, you need. Don't you already have the information? We do have access to a lot of information, but we don't uh, know the exact condition of the property or any update, uh, updates or changes that have, may have been made. Those can have a big impact on our offer. So is it okay if we ask some questions about the property so we could put in an offer? So uh, those are just the common objections, you guys. You're going to come into uh, a lot more objections than this, but that's just pretty much uh, the basics of it. All right, you guys? If you guys want this script or you want the, um, the call flow, uh, reach out to me. Like I said, that's just a qualifying uh, lead manager call, uh, call flow and um, script. That is not an acquisitions manager script. All right, you guys? If you have any questions, let me know. Do you understand everything? Yeah, this is the second time. Did I already go this over? Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, Connor, he did pretty good today. You got anything you want to say about that, Connor? Nope, not good. Okay. So, uh, did you take any notes on this particular part? Or no. I mean, I wrote, I wrote my own script, so I didn't look, so I didn't say exactly what you said on the phone. Oh yeah. So yeah, my one of my my lead manager that just started this week, you guys. He, I, I had the script for him, but he pretty much wrote it in his own words, so it flows off his tongue a lot easier, and he, he's able to say it a lot easier. So you guys don't have to word it exactly like I put it in the script, but um, just make sure you're getting to the goal of the question. And that's what really matters. Ty, can you please do a live on the different types of deals you can create through wholesaling? Um, really, I only focus on wholesale deals and uh, realtor leads. So uh, retail leads. I don't do the uh, typical... Uh, you know, uh, lease options, seller financing, and fix and flips and stuff like that. I just uh, typically just do straight wholesaling and uh, pushing any retail leads to realtors who are looking to, who are interested in working with realtors. What's up, you guys? What's up? Um, so go back and watch this video if you guys are just uh, joining in. I went over uh, this call flow. Um, that I got here and also went over my uh, script. Uh, if you don't, no, I don't offer one-on-ones. Um, yes, yeah, subject to, I don't do either. That's more of House Buying Brian. Go follow House Buying Brian. He talks about that. So you, you guys have any questions or not? Pretty straightforward for the most part. All right. I'll look over some more and if I got anything, I'll um, ask you. I did write this note down. I don't know if you want to do that though. What? About being shot after uh, you get after price. 
Huh? After being, how about, have you said to be shocked after they gave you that promise? Oh yeah, you saw. So I did have, I did write one note about, uh, He's getting about to drop a gem on you guys. I did write one note about what we were just talking about. Right after you ask for the price and they tell you the price, no matter what the price is, you want to seem like you are shocked. So you can try to lower that price down for you. You heard that, you guys? So when, uh, whenever you ask for the, the, the seller's asking price, no matter what that price is, you're always going to act shocked, all right? So even if it's a great deal or whatever, you're going to be like, wow, it's a lot lower than what I thought it was or whatever, you know, because the seller is always stop or starting above where they want to be at. Right. Any every seller. So you just automatically act shocked and act like, you know, uh, you're surprised they're asking for that much. And when you do that, that automatically puts it in their head. Uh, it's a psychology thing. So um, and then you transition into my twenty thousand dollar question i haven't told you guys yet stay tuned for that because i'll be dropping a video on that soon you guys but um all right you guys i'm gonna get off here because i gotta teach him some other stuff about uh analyzing deals um so uh send me a dm if you guys want those uh scripts in the call flow all right you guys What's up, you guys? So I just realized I mistakenly uh, said something on that live video uh, at the very end. So I just wanted to go over that so I can correct myself and you guys understand that better. So uh, what my lead manager was saying is whenever you get the seller's asking price, uh, you're always going to act surprised and shocked like uh, they're asking too much. So in that live video, accidentally said um, it the opposite way like you're shocked it's so low I did not mean to say act like it uh, act shot because it's low act shot because it's too high even if it's at a price you need it to be at still act shot that it is uh, too high that way it puts in their head already a psychology thing because um, the seller is always going to um, ask more than what they want right so when you that that's already putting it in their head and setting the stage for when you're negotiating that deal um, so if you want more details on that you guys just go back and watch uh, the live in full all right dropped a lot of gems and talked about uh, the in incoming phone calls qualifying the lead uh, disqualifying the lead capitalizing on realtors and uh, making money on retail leads and also wholesale leads all right you guys if you want the script and you want the uh, the the flip chart uh send me a dm you guys and i'll give you that flow chart all right all right you guys so my lead manager just did his first incoming phone call and i'm just listening to the recording here and i want to give him feedback so he's standing right here and uh, we're listening to this phone call and he said something that um, I wanted him to do it a different way. So I figured I'd record this for you guys just so you guys can learn from it as well. So here's the, the part I'm talking about. So let's just go ahead and listen in on this phone call and then I'll pause it and tell you guys what I think. All right. And so this is my lead manager talking Just right here. Make sure I got everything that I have here. And if I was to pay all class, you know, you don't have to deal with it. The deal would be as painless as possible, you know, close as soon as possible, all that. Would you be negotiable at all on that price there, or are you firm on the 6200 All right, so the problem here was is he didn't. And so whenever you're, you're – asking if the seller can come down on the price um, you know if they're at all at all negotiable on that price you want to do it in a way that you know it doesn't seem like we're asking that question on every single phone call so what happened here was um, he asked 
the seller how much he wanted for the property a few minutes ago before he said this and then you know he said you know I got to make sure I have everything here then he was looking to make sure he had everything and then he asked that question so it seems like that he has to ask that question um, you know that I require him to ask that question and that's not what we want the sellers to think we want the sellers to think that you know uh, it, it, that's not a necessity question. We don't want them to think that we're trying to get the lowest of the lowest number on every single phone call um, or every single property. So with that being said, the best way to do it would be to transition, to transition it into this question as soon as you get an asking price from the seller. So the seller says um, how much ever they want and then no matter what that price is, you're gonna react in a way that um, it seems like it's too too high. So if the seller says, you know, yeah, I'm looking to get 55,000 for, well, the lead manager or you, if you're a single person doing this business, you might, you'll just have a, uh, a kind of like a bad reaction. Wow, it's a lot higher than I thought it was. Um, you know, if I can pay all cash, um, close on any date you choose, whether it's as quickly as you want or as long as you want to take, um, close on a date that you choose, um, buy as is, pay pay cash, pay the closing costs, no commission fees to you or anything like that. I mean, are you more negotiable on that price? Because I mean, that's a lot higher than I thought it was going to be. And then that way, you're transitioning into it um, in a way that doesn't seem like you're always asking that person um, or always asking sellers that question no matter what. You want a smooth transition and do it do it in a way that it's right after um, the the uh, they they give you the asking price. So I hope this guys this helped you you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. All right, you guys. So my lead manager just took a second phone call, and on this phone call, he did a great job. Um, he did kind of kind of do something I didn't want him to do, but it's okay. He's learning. Um, I, the reason why I say he did a good job is because he got the seller to come down $20,000 with one question, you guys. $20,000. So I'm going to play this uh, recording for you guys so you can, see, you can hear exactly what happened, what question he asked, and how he was able to get the seller to come down $20,000. So I'm going to play it right here, you guys. Yeah, 100%. How much was you looking for? Do you know? Uh, I was going to list it with the carpenter for one hundred and seventy thousand. One hundred and seventy thousand. Yes. And if we was to pay all cash, pay closing costs, you know, close on the day, whatever works best for you, you know, make it as painless as possible so we can get that off your hands. Is there any way that you'd be able to negotiate that price with us? Well, you know, the lowest I'll probably go is one hundred fifty thousand. Okay, $150,000 the lowest you think you'll go? Yes. All right, there you guys go. So uh, instantly with one question, he came down from one seventy to 120000 So, uh, or 150000 I'm sorry. So uh, that question right there alone was a $20,000 question. Okay, you guys? So um, he did uh, do it. Uh, slightly different than what I mentioned earlier and that's okay he, he probably just forgot um, so typically you automatically as soon as he says the price you automatically want to have a bad reaction no matter what um, say wow mr. mr. seller um, that's a lot higher than I I was imagining you you to say um, so with that being said uh, is there any way um, if we, you know if we pay all cash uh, close on a date you choose no matter how soon it is or, or how long it is we close on a date you pick um, pay all cash buy it as is you don't have to do anything to the property um, pay all closing cost and there's no commission fees to you uh, since you're not listing it with a realtor um, if we can do all this for you mr. seller is there any way you can come down on that price or you can say something like, um, what's the best price you can do for us? Um, or, you know, what's the lowest price you can do for us if we're able to do that for you? Or can you come down on that price at all, considering that's a lot higher than I was, I was I'm hoping for? Um, 
and that should instantly get the person to come down on price unless they're just not really motivated and they're firm on the price um, but if they're motivated they're going to come down on the price so um, I hope this helped you guys um, definitely utilize that when you guys are talking to these sellers because you can get them to come down on price almost instantly so good luck you guys alright so the seller had asked um, what our intentions were with the property so I'm gonna play this real quick and tell you guys my thoughts on this as well so if you didn't hear him he's kind of talking pretty low but if you didn't hear him he said uh, what is your intentions with the property for something like this and then this was my lead manager's re reply just this uh, we just you know we look for properties around the area just to see who is selling them. Uh, it could be anything from vacant lots. It could be houses, you know, duplexes, anything that we can pretty much get our hands on. And we just pretty much we just double close. We just buy them, you know, and then we just sell them and just try to make a little bit of money off of it. Okay, so. Um, he pretty much just told him that, you know, we're, we're looking to make a profit on the property. Um, obviously, all investors are looking to make a profit, whether it's a, a, a wholesaler, it's an investor who's going to fix and flip it, an investor who's going to develop on the land, an investor who's going to, you know, buy it to rent it out. But in this case scenario, he pretty much told him that we are looking to be the middleman and, and sell the property and double close on it. Um, I, I recommend not to say it that way because whenever you word it that way, um, people don't like when you know we're acting as a middleman and you know purchasing the or making a profit off of them. So to word it in a different way would be a lot better. So if if you're allowed to double close in your area, um, every area is different and sometimes it's uh, illegal in some areas, but in my area we're allowed to double close. So um, I would recommend for my lead manager, which I already talked to him about, is that we um, don't say it like that. We're actually telling them we're purchasing the property, we're going on title. Um, and then when you say it like that, you know they're putting in their head that you know okay cool you're actually purchasing it you're, you're going on title and you know at that point they don't feel like you know they're being taken advantage of or anything like that so it's just all about how you word it um, if you're in a state um, that it's illegal to double close and you're not going on title you're actually assigning the property then at that point you you do want to be honest with them because they are going to see it on the paperwork whenever you assign it and whenever you uh, assign your assign your purchase agreement and whenever you're on the closing statement they'll see you on the closing statement and they'll see the actual buyer on the closing statement um, so it, it's it's good to be upfront and honest with them if they were to ask you and you're not in a double closing state um, unless if you have private funds or transactional funding to actually go on title then you can word it like I am but if you're not if you don't have that stuff then no worries just be upfront and honest with them um, I've been upfront and honest with people plenty of times uh, when I decide to uh, assign and not double close so um, and I've still made tens and thousands of dollars without the seller caring because they're in some type of situation to where they need to sell and not want to sell so you'll still be able to make money. Um, there's people, wholesalers in Florida that do assignments all the time making money even though double closing it is illegal over there. Um, so I wouldn't let that uh, roadblock stop you. Um, just, just, just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. If you get a seller that doesn't like that, that's fine. Um, you know, it is what it is. You know they're obviously not motivated enough and you're or either you're doing something wrong you're not solving their problems or they're just not motivated enough if you're solving all of their problems they're gonna work with you it's as simple as that so provide value and you'll be able to close deals all right you guys so good luck all right so my lead manager has a question for me you guys and I just wanted to record it and uh, let you guys know what my response is on it so go ahead what is what would you think the motivation is on this 
property if it was a warm or a cold. Um, he said he doesn't need it to be sold as soon as possible. There is no time frame for him. He could sit on the property if he wants to. But at the same time, he also said that he, he's tired of the property. He wants to get rid of it. He was saving it for his son, but his son passed away. So I was just confused on if that would be a warm or a cold uh, motivation. Okay. So there's, there's three motivations. Warm, there's cold, warm, or hot. And what, in your opinion, Connor, um, what do you think brings a cold, warm, or hot motivation? What do you think determines that? For a hot motivation, I would say that he just wants to sell it as soon as possible. Uh, he's tired of keeping up with the property. Um, they're in a situation where they just need the money as soon as possible, as soon as they get their hands on it. So to me, that would be a hot motivation. A cold motivation to me, I feel like it would be for something like, as he was saying, he doesn't need to sell it as soon as possible. He can sit on the property as long as he needs to, you know. He said he was making his money's worth with the rent. Um, and he just really, he was just trying to see where our offer was. And then a warm, I feel like it would be something along the timeline of, the money was right. So you're saying it, it it's a hot lead if he just wants to see what our offer is and no, it's a it's a hot lead if he wants to get rid of the property as soon as possible if he needs the cash um, as soon as possible because of the situation he, he's in, and then it's a cold lead if he can sit on the property because he's making his money's worth is what he said along those lines with the rent being eight twenty five in one and seven twenty five on the other he just wants to see what our offer is and that's it. And then I feel like a warm would be, uh, he would be willing to negotiate on the price if um, he wants to sell, you know, within a certain time frame, not instead of it being as soon as possible, if it's like a 60 to 90 day kind of thing, you know, along those lines. Okay, so pretty much that, that covers it. Um, so pretty much it, the difference between hot, warm, and cold, on, on a hot lead, I always, always make it a hot lead if their asking price is in with range of it being a deal or a possible deal. Um, so that's always, always a hot motivation um, because we want to be able to contact that person and make them an offer and get it under contract as soon as possible, right? So um, warm leads. Um, it could be somebody who's closer to the asking price or let me go back let me go back so hot lead always be a it will always be a hot lead if if they're in range of where we need the price to be at okay um, if they're not within the price range we need to be at but they have high motivation like you know they just lost their job or the the properties in pre foreclosure or they inherited the property their parents died they inherited it um, you know stuff like that to where they need to sell it they're tired of, deal of dealing with the property um, they just want to get rid of it and then at that point it's a high motivation okay so warm is going to be you know somebody who is uh, you know they're they're not asking retail um, you know but at that same time it's not uh, it's not a deal just yet but they're almost there we're just not on you know uh, the, the same terms that we want to be on so you know their asking price might be ten fifteen thousand dollars higher than what we needed at but it's still not retail it's still not top dollar property so that would be warm um, and then also as far as their their motivation goes um, you know it's less of course less motivated than the person who needs to sell but it's also um, a higher motivation than a cold lead that's like you know just take me off the list um, I don't want to you know, I don't want to receive your letters anymore um, I don't want to sell my property those are the cold leads so if it's something higher than that they're they're actually interested in selling the property they want an offer um, but they don't have any immediate need to sell that's more uh, warm and then cold, uh, of course, they're, they're, they want retail, they want top dollar. Um, you know, they're, they don't have any motivation to sell. They're not really need desperate situation or anything like that. Um, and then also if the property is in disrepair, disrepair, 
it's in it needs a lot of work and they don't have the money to fix it something like that that's also indication of high motivation uh, so those are the difference uh, so going back to your question uh, you was asking if the guy is uh, a hot warm or cold lead okay so he's saying that um, if I remember correctly he was saying that uh, he was saving the house for his son, but he passed away, and uh, he needs to sell it. He does not need to sell it in a time frame. Um, hold on one second, guys. Appreciate it, brother. I right, appreciate it, brother. Thank you, man. You have a good one, man. All right, so his question was... Um, he, he, we're trying to figure out if it's high, uh, hot, warm, or cold motivation for this guy. So he, um, he does not need it sold in a time frame. He can sit on it if he wants to and rent, rent it out. But at the same time, he's also saying that um, he's tired of dealing with it. He was going to give it to his son, but his son passed away. Um, and he's tired of dealing with it, but at the same time, he doesn't need to sell it if he doesn't, he's not desperate pretty much. So I would say this is more on the warm side because he is interested in selling it, 